So hello guys, send her again. Today, what we're going to be talking about is tier lists. And, uh, you know, we got a new patch. It's 4.9 now. I was a bit surprised that this patch came out. But I think now would be about the time that I would normally make a tier list. So I would come maybe on a site like this and I would start to, you know, put weapons where I think they belong. Uh, I would do this for a while. Then I would either make a video about it or I would maybe post on Twitter that guys. This is the tier list. This is the tier list of 4.9 right here. And, you know, I guess a lot of other people would do the same thing, understandably. But I'm not so sure how much tier list makes sense in Splatoon anymore. So I don't see myself doing any more tier list for the time being. And this video is going to be about why I don't think tier lists are that great in this game currently. But yeah, if you don't know, tier lists originally come from fighting games. So fighting games, of course, the biggest difference between a Splatoon and a fighting game is that a fighting game is 1v1. So when we think about this in Splatoon terms, what it, this would mean is that we won't only have to consider that, say, when we're rating Luna, is that how well does Luna perform against a sloshing machine? How well does it perform against Skiffer? And then we would just go with over every uh, weapon in the game like this, and then we know roughly where Luna should uh, go. Like, okay, if it has like 50% win rate against everything, then probably like around middle of the year is good. If it's losing more than it's winning, then probably here. But if it's clearly doing better than other weapons, then I will put it in the highest tier, for example. So making tier list for fighting games, even if that is also not completely non-problematic, it's much easier because of this, because there's less variables this way. Where's, but we are playing Splatoon, so Splatoon is always going to be, uh, you know, a 4 versus 4 game. So not only do we have to consider that how Luna is doing on in a uh, 1v1 situation against other weapons, we also have to think about how Luna works with different comps and which kind of comps it's strong against, which modes is strong on, which map is strong on. So there's a lot more to consider, a lot of variables come into place. And normally what a tier list is, they just like kind of like puke every weapon in one list like this and then say this is like Splatoon tier list now. Which is like, like fair enough I suppose, but you know, this is a game with decent amount of weapons as you can see. Like this is a lot of weapons for a game. In my opinion, it's a game with four modes, five modes even. Uh, and then you just make like one list like this and say this is like this is it chief this is this is what the game is about i don't know i don't know if, if it if it really works that way even like mo mode wise there's a lot of like uh, differences between splat zones and clamplets yet it's very rare to see someone make like different tier lists for different modes instead we are acting like clamplets is the same thing as like splat zones it's not it's just that's not how it works and in the same way, we are putting, you know, completely different roles in the same list. So here, I'm, I'm almost done with my tier list here, but, but say we have like a, we have like a fire fin spider scope in the bottom tier. And then the higher tier is pretty short range. So say we are making a team comp with Team Olive, and we have Ursa, we have Dude, we have myself, and we already picked weapons that are all pretty... High tier, so I'm playing Luna Blaster, Dude is playing Undercover, and Ursus is playing uh, Silver Air Spray. And then Brian has a thing of what should I play? Hmm. Well, I guess I gotta pick a Colin Air Spray since it's the last in the highest tier list. Even if it doesn't really make sense, like, role wise, like, we would have Brian play something backline ish. So even then, he would have to, like, go down in the tier list to pick something that works with those weapons, and that is something tier list in this game never really consider. And yeah, we could make like a backline tier list and frontline tier list and support tier list. But the roles aren't that rigid in this game either. Like you have a lot of roles. You have a lot of uh, things to consider when you are putting weapons together than just let's put like one frontline, one support, one supportive frontline or backline. And then you make for a tier list. This just doesn't work that way. I don't think so. So it would be like endless amount of tier list. Even if, we, if, even if we act for a second, we have like four roles, then times four modes, 
that's already like 16 tier list all of a sudden. And that's not like feasible. And we have a lot more roles than that. So that would be endless amount of tier list in my opinion. So I think a lot of time also, it's a bit different thing, but it, it relates to this as well. You don't really, it's not really clear what the people, like the person is rating. Like, are you rating your personal opinion of where the weapon should go? Or are you rating statistics? Like how often is a weapon played? It's not very clear very often. I think it's kind of like you're mixing it where it's convenient for you because no one no one individual can have like perfect understanding of every weapon in the game so you kind of like you know using the statistics where it's convenient and then in your personal opinion you might boost someone and that's fair and all but i don't know it just doesn't it's just really like transparent to me what people are often rating when they're making a tier list and actually, I think the best way to approach making a tier list would be to make something based on statistics. So you have, you know, a tier list that's just based on how often a weapon is played. And I seen, I think a Japanese guy made a tier list like this. It was really interesting. But even then, we don't really have that many, like, you know, tournament series, especially in West, that go for a long time, when all the good players would be playing. That you could make a tier list like this. Like you could make one for max rank. I think there are some tier lists like that. That would be interesting. But that's very very different thing. Than rating what's actually the strongest. That's like just rating what's used the most. And it might be useful metric. But that's I think very different thing. That people are claiming a tier list to be. And also. I think it's natural. Like human. Like a. Like, uh, I forget the English word, but basically hive minding, like you are acting like a unit instead of thinking of your own. So when you, when people see a tier list, very often they're, they are kind of like following it, at least on some level. So good players tend to kind of like, I, I don't really like the word hive mind, but that's basically what I'm trying to talk about here. Is that they kind of like hive mind and go towards a certain set of weapons. And then, of course, because all the good players are using the same weapons, then those good weapons are gonna win tournaments. But it, how much of it that is just because the weapons are good, and how much of it is that, you know, just good players happen to be playing the same weapons for one reason or another. Like, I'm not, like, for example, Crack in Paradise, this team, at its best at least, was so above anyone, every other team, so they could have played a lot of, like, very bad weapons and just win with them because they're so much better but kind of like when you look at the top teams in west and whatnot it's not so different what weapons people are running it's mostly the same weapons so you could say maybe that's just because those weapons are good yeah maybe it is but we don't really know it's on, it, like every tournament it's gonna be like Kenza like Kansas Paddy Shot winning because almost every team has Kansas Paddy Shot is it because Kansas Paddy Shot is the strongest um it's hard to tell. So yeah, it kind of like self-reinforcing in this way, because as long as you make a tier list that you are sure that every weapon that top players play is at the top, then it's gonna kind of like work in a way where eventually your tier list will come through, because those weapons are gonna be winning if those are the only weapons that are being played. And this kind of connects to it that you have then lower tier weapons that are not being played by the best players, even if they would have more potential to do better. And especially I think what I see sometimes is the surprise factor. So someone pulls out a dynamo and not many people know how to play against the dynamo solely because no one really plays it in this game that much. And I personally think it has some great potential to be played as long as you figure out the team comp around it. So when you pick a uh, play against the dynamo you cannot do worse because it's something you don't play against so often say Kenza Undercover Brella yeah I think this weapon is quite strong for TC but when you play against Kenza Undercover Brella you know exactly what to expect and you know how to play against it but say dynamo it's not so clear how you're supposed to play against dynamo for most people so yeah if I had to sum this video up I would kind of say it's kind of like time to stop thinking this like tier listy like I don't think this is really the game that you just look at the highest tier and Vicky Elite or Luna Undercover Silver Air Spray. I don't think that's really it. Like you have to start thinking about team building more, what weapons work well together. And maybe people have to start to come in terms with the fact that the game is pretty balanced in the end. Like a lot of it is just figuring out what weapons work well together. 
instead of just figuring out what happens to be at the top of the tier list. But I don't think tier lists are all bad, and I'm not like here to rose every tier list maker. I know like different people see them as different ways, and for quite a few people it's not so serious, <laughs> so to speak. And you know, every time a tier list is released by like some rather known player, there's always a good discussion to be had, and I think it's always good to talk about things. So at least that I would like to say about the list that they do generate good discussion. But personally, I don't. It's really hard for me to see making like a tier list in this game. So that's why you shouldn't expect a tier list video from me. But yeah, that's the video. Hope you liked it. Uh, just leave a comment. Tell me what you think about tier lists. Like the video, put thumbs up. And I'm gonna be making more videos. So please look forward to those. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.